Hi, welcome to Infusion Health, the podcast. I'm comedian Chris Patrick, a.k.a. self proclaimed Power Man. I'm here with my co-host and significant other, Rach. Hey, guys. Now, today we got a great show. Um, we're talking about one of my favorite things, working out. And we got Jesse Gonzala, and he's a personal trainer, and he's also a physique physique competitor and he's going to tell us about uh working out how to get in shape uh definitely diet and he's also going to talk about um you know um the steroid thing too you know um how it's in you know bodybuilding but he's not a bodybuilder he's a physique competitor and um without further ado i'm just going to bring him on jesse welcome to the show Hey, thanks, guys. <laughs> so, nice to be here. So, okay, now you're a physique. <laughs> it's, it's hard to say. Keep physique. saying physique, <laughs> physique competitor. So, how how is that different? Because we know bodybuilding, and and I've been to um I've been to a few Mister O's, you know, and these guys are big, huge, you know. Yeah. And now we got the then the physique uh, um competition came in. When when did when did exactly did that come in as 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 a Opposed to bodybuilding. You know, buddy, that's kind of been phasing in really since the 90s. Yeah, because I've, I've noticed it because because I've you know, like I said, I've been to a few body. I'm like, what is physique? And then I look at them. I'm like, oh, they're not big. Like it's a, it's a different it's a different thing, you know? Yeah, it's weird because the like Arnold Schwarzenegger has said, mm-hmm. if he competed today, he would be a physique competitor, not a bodybuilder. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the, the size, especially with guys like Ronnie Coleman, I think mm-hmm. Ronnie Coleman really pushed it where yeah. you, you just started to see crazy massive mass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, so much so that guys like, you know, the old school guys like Lou Ferrigno, Franco Colombo. Frank you know, Zane. Sh- fr- fr- yeah, 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 for sure. Some of those guys, they're just, you know, they couldn't compete with the Jay Cutlers, the Ronnie sure. Coleman's, the yeah. Flex Wheelers. Yeah. They were just, they just weren't as big. Um, mm-hmm. Probably because, well, one reason is I'm sure I'm sure the old guys trained just as hard as the new guys, but you know, with the advent of some of the new drugs yeah, on the yeah, market. But, and well, the correct amount. me if I'm wrong. They're also finding thing mm, ways to like add things into your body with syringes now. Oh gosh, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's been that's been going on for a oh, long yeah. time. For sure. So, so physique was, was kind of born out of the fact that like, like me, I just can't put on, I can't put on a tremendous amount of mass, mm-hmm. you know? Well, well before, yeah. before. Oh yeah. Go ahead. Um, okay. We, we, okay. You can't put on, but what, what is your, you're, you're like six, you're six feet, hundred. Oh God. No, no buddy. I'm, I'm right around five ten. Five ten, yeah. hundred, hundred and right now I'm 180, 170. Right now I'm 162. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And, and I, I won't get like, I usually won't get much more than 165. My last show, I was 149.1. Okay. You know, a lot of the guys live in the 150 range. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. So, so like I said, in the opening, you're not like the big body, you know, big Sean Ray's or Dorian Yates is not, you know, you're a smaller, smaller frame and, um, and you're competing at that. And of course you're, you're cut, you're cut, but it's more like, I, I, I tell people it's more like a, um, a male stripper body, not like a bodybuilding body. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of that episode that we did with EMG for mm, versus body weight. Mm-hmm. You know how he was talking about the different cuts of the body yeah. and you kind of gotten, you're definitely there, but mm-hmm. you're not like massive. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger was correct. Correct. Yeah. You, it's well, that's, that's, What's a little frustrating to me, I mean, physique for me was always more about like showing the human body in its its most defined form. Sure. Um, but what, what we're finding, uh, what I'm finding, is that mass is starting to even sneak in into physique. So like the last show, I lost to a guy who I was more defined. Okay. I was showing eight abs to his probably four, maybe he had six in some poses, but he probably had me by 25 to 30 pounds and he was showing more mass. Mm. And so now this next show, I, I'm, I've been putting on mass to kind of mm, do what the judges are looking for. Okay. Okay. So yeah. when you say you, you've been put on mass, we're going to, we're going to um, start to dive into diet. Are, is it high, high, um, high carbs or low carbs or. Yeah, well, okay. So, so someone like me, I, I just anybody, a, a straight macro count would be like about a, a gram per pound of protein, about 300 carbs, 300 grams of carbs, and about 70 grams of fat. That's kind of like a neutral baseline for a lot of people. If you're going to grow mass, 1.4 to 1.7 grams of protein. So a guy like me, I weigh 162-ish right now. I'm putting on about 220 plus grams of protein a day. Okay. For my carbs, 
Okay, well, you say, oh, go, yeah, go you say protein. Where are you getting your protein from? Powders, uh, chicken breasts, uh, chicken livers? Uh. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the, the, I get them from the places that most people say you should get them, most physique sure. competitors. I mean, we're talking about lean proteins, really chicken and fish. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Um, so you're pulling it straight out of the animal instead of doing your powders. I still do the whey protein isolate. Okay. I, I, okay. I still do that because they have to supplement to get that much protein a day. I mean, sure. you only need so much Absolutely. chicken and fish. And, and if you do, your sodium gets really high too. You get sodium high, you retain the water. So you got to be careful. But I, in fact, I'll start to cut out sodium slowly as I get closer to the show. But lean proteins, fish, rice, eggs, cottage cheese, that's where I kind of, oh, I said rice, fish, chicken, cottage cheese, and eggs. That's okay. where I kind of live on my proteins. And, and how often do you eat? you eat? Three times a day, five times a day, six times a day? Four to six. Four to six I'm, times. I'm usually around six, every about two to two and a half hours. And I remember, then what about your carbohydrates? Just staying on the diet thing. Yeah, so I like to front load and post load. Um, there's a lot of different schools of thought here, but I put a good chunk of them before my workout and a good chunk of them after my workout, and that's about it. And what? And when we when we talk carbs, are we talking potatoes, bread, uh, oatmeal and rice, brown rice? Okay. Oatmeal and brown rice. That's pretty much it. And again, that's not cheeseburgers. No. I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> after the show. <laughs> <laughs> I've showed you what I got. Now I'm going to go eat. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's grotesque what I eat after these shows. Yeah, well, and, and that's and, and that's the thing, uh, joking aside, because when you're when you're work, when you're doing this, when you're getting ready for a show like you are, you know, you you got to watch what you eat and all that. And then what happens is some and I've seen this happen. Some guys just eat way too much in the off season. Then they get their next show and they're like, oh, I, I got to cut more. So it's kind of a, a constant battle like, OK. I can I can eat what I want for for a month or half a month or a couple of weeks, but then I gotta mm-hmm. I gotta start to get in shape for this next show, you know. Well, what do you want to do? Do you want to kind of dirty bulk or clean bulk? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I kind of like to live in in an area. I mean, I'm I'm a little more extreme with my carbs than sure. most people are. I kind of live in ketosis, okay, which is fine for me. But if if you if you dirty bulk, if you pile all that stuff in, mm-hmm. it just I find it harder to to really cut. And, and get in the mental space sure. that is needed. So I kind of live a pretty, if I, if I want to put on muscle mass, I up my protein, I make sure my creatine's right. I drink a lot of water, you know, I up my volume, I up my reps and I'll, I'll live there as opposed to like, let's just pop in an extra thousand calories a day for a month mm-hmm. and then just try to chisel it all back away. That sure. yo-yoing is just really difficult. That's okay. what I was kind of counting and call it. And they're finding that the sugars or whatever you put in your body, your your mind remembers these things. Mm. So you're not only fighting like your body wanting it, but you're also fighting your mind wanting these sugars and these carbohydrates and everything else that you gave them for that month and then you got to go slam back down and start bulking back up the way you need to. You're so right, Rach, because you, you want to get to a point. It takes me, it took me about six months, I would say six to nine months to start to lose the food that I really like. So it, it became a habit to eat cleaner. Uh, in fact, I accidentally had a little vanilla flavored almond milk, mm. my kid, this morning. <laughs> I took a little I took a little sip out of the glass. I thought it was unsweetened oat milk. I grabbed the wrong one and the sugar just came rushing into Absolutely. me. You know, and I'm like, yeah. "Oh my god, what is this?" I put it back, you know, mm-hmm. dumped out the milk and I'm like, "Oh, I can't handle this." Yeah. Because okay. my body just now it's the opposite. Mm-hmm. It's like, "Oh, this is hurting it." Yeah. Okay, well let's let's um let's take it back a second because I, I just want to say to to the average person listening that's going, "Oh, hey, this now he's Okay, the average person listening to this and wants to start working out and all that. And then they go, well, he's talked about, cre- and he goes and buys Creatine. He goes, what exactly, how do you, how do you get started? And what, what exactly do you buy? And who should you talk to as far as before you go buy $100 worth of Creatine and protein powders and all that? How, how do you get started in this? Well, first of all, buddy, talk to, I mean, talk to a dietitian, talk to a nutritionist, talk to a trainer, talk to someone who has a kind of a mm-hmm. background in this because everybody's different, sure. as yeah. you guys sure. know. So one kid might want to, You'll come to me and say, I need to gain 30 pounds by my football seat or by being in football. I'm like, well, we, we need a heavier protein mm-hmm. for you. We need mm-hmm. almost a, a triple mass, a weight gainer sort of protein. Where the next person comes and they want to get tone and fit, mm-hmm. we're not going to lift for hypertrophy. We're not going to put yeah. on crazy volume and sets. We're, right. If anything, we're going to add in a little more cardio. We're going to add lower weights for muscle endurance. You know, mm-hmm. we're, we're not going to 
grow big. Mm-hmm. So it, it depends. It depends. And sure. keep it and keep in mind to the listeners out there is that you you have to work out too. You can't just say, Well, this guy get big, I'm just gonna go get you can't just take creatine and now you gotta work out too. You gotta you gotta also exercise. It's um diet and exercise. So don't just run to your local vitamin store, start buying creatine and loading up on creatine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and I mean just going back to that, I mean creatine, I mean that's been one of the most studied supplements okay. there is. Yeah. And and kind of the general census with creatine is is if you want to build muscle, about five grams a day. Yeah. That's about it. And and it's it, I mean creatine's naturally in your body anyway. So mm-hmm. this is just a, a a little boost. Well do you do you still gotta um cycle load at first? You do it like three times a day for a week and then once a day? Yeah, buddy. So they with with normal creatine powder, they'll typically tell you to do that. They'll yeah. say load up and then maintenance. Now there are creatines out there. There's one at GNC HCL 189. It has faster absorption rates. It's just two pills a day, no loading phase. Mm-hmm. Again, what you know, but 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 live in live in that five gram a day world. But just remember, creatine also retains water weight. So yeah. I will actually in about a week here. My show's April eighth. I dump creatine four weeks out. Sure. My question for the listeners is, is these powders being like, they're watching the shelf life. They're watching what actually you can like consume in your body. Because if you, I, I and I've done it, I've marked a vitamin bottle in Walmart, put it in the back of the shelf. Wow. I and know you're doing, yeah. you know, right. It's still there. The shelf life is like, exhausted and if you look at what they're putting through vitamins and stuff these days it's what way more way more than what your body can take in one day well i I would say and i'll let you talk to you i would say if if you're going to get into this and you want to start supplementing all that don't buy your stuff at walmart (laughs) (laughs) yeah but i'm just saying and i I know what you're saying i'm just saying this could be at a pharmacy this could be anywhere they're over doing some of this stuff yeah yeah. yeah, you want to go to a place where you're right. There's not a bunch of like I'll go to places where you know Lifetime or GNC or, or places that that may only have two three canisters of protein isolate uh, on the shelf. You know you and and there's people coming in there that are going to regularly buy these things. You're right because if I go in and there's like twenty canisters deep, yeah, I see what you're saying. It's like what's going on. Well, and the same thing when you're when you're looking at protein powders too. I mean. You want to make sure there's enough information. You need the right BCAs. You want to make sure there's the right amino acids. You want those amino acids listed. You want, like, it should really be a breakdown. I know there's isolates out there or just protein powders in general. There's nothing on them. You you can't, you, there's just not enough mm-hmm. information. Right. So you yeah. really got to know what you're you're, you're putting in mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah, it says you'll, you'll go to a store like a Walmart and it says protein powder. Oh, I'll get protein powder. And they're they're ripping you off, people. Talk to somebody who knows what they're doing, who knows, who knows about this and ask them, ask around first before you go. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, 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 and, and some of it's just trial and error too. I've had to right. experiment, you know, experiment with different proteins and I'm like, yo, know, I, I do like that one and the quantities are different. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, there might be a protein isolate where you got to put four scoops in. There's right. another one you might only have to put two scoops in. It's a little more dense. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. Now as for your workout, is it much like the bodybuilder or how do you go about your workout so you're ready for these competitions? For sure. So I'm lifting for hypertrophy. I'm lifting for muscle growth. And actually I just got back from a clinic where there's a bunch of new studies that came out. And so typical for hypertrophy is what the thinking was always about eight to 12 reps, right? About four to six sets and you should be working out anywhere from 70% to about 75% of your max weight over four to six exercises. Okay. Okay. So I had a guy today that's kind of lifting for this and yeah. I was training him. He did four sets, 12 reps, mm-hmm. seven different exercises, four times, well, four sets. So sure. he kind of did a round of all those 20, exercises. 28 total sets per body, per, yeah. per muscle group. Yeah. 336 reps. Okay. On, on the chest. Sure. So when you're lifting for hypertrophy, volume, you're not going big weight. You're going lower weight. You're just upping the reps okay. and you're upping the volume. That That is difficult. That's a lot of pressure on one body part. But the new science now is you don't have to worry about the rep ranges as much. Now the rep ranges are as broad as three to 30 reps, okay. which is 
is nuts because we always thought that like you start to push over 12, 13, 14. Now you're working muscle endurance. You're not working muscle growth. Mm -hmm. It's a little different now. So as, as long as you're kind of isolating whatever body part you're using with the right technique, being, being very, very cognizant of your form. Yeah. And I like to do so when I'm lifting right now, I'll do five to six sets of usually five to seven activities, all focused on different areas of the body part. At least 12 reps, sometimes I'll push it to 14. What's really nuts is some of the new science, a lot of people think they have to load up more. There's no difference between adding a couple reps and keeping the weight where it is or adding weight and bringing the reps down, Mm -hmm. which is very interesting. People are like, well, this last set, I'm going to push it and do 10 pounds more. Mm -hmm. You could keep that same weight and just do two to three more reps. Same thing, which is nuts. Mm -hmm. But it's a different way to train because the standard thinking is what? Three sets of 12. Mm-hmm. It, that's on, on a on like on a chest press, three right. sets of twelve. There's no way you're going to grow there. No, and even right, and even if you're lifting for hypertrophy, where's your protein? Yeah, right, which is huge. Mm-hmm. How is your recovery? Well, you said high high perp. High, <laughs> what what exactly is that? Oh, lifting for muscle growth, hypertrophy okay. muscle growth. Chris. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that 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 you have to be well. It's like when you bring in cardio. When you bring in cardio to a guy like me. Cardio is kind of enemy, the enemy of muscle growth and and lifting for like a physique show. Mm-hmm. Well, a lot of, a lot of a lot of people, a lot of bodybuilders and physique competitors, a lot of them do cardio to cut down the fat to bring out the muscles more. You're right, but you got to be careful because too much cardio starts to starts you start to, to see negative returns, diminishing returns on your muscle growth. So, sure. like, I talked to a guy, doctor, natural physique competitor. I actually talked to him today. Um, he he his cardio is just whatever he's doing that day, walking to the laundry room, going to, you know, the bookstore. I mean, that's his cardio. Because I was talking to him and I'm like, okay, I swim twice a week. Mm-hmm. I, I swim in a steady state. Steady state cardio for, for guys like me are far better than like- High I would, intensity. High yeah. inti- I would never go in and do a high intensity thing. So he's like, well, I mean, and I go, I'm not even pushing this. I'm talking 45 minutes in the pool, mm-hmm. very slow crawl. Even then he was kind of like, ah, I don't know. I don't think you really need to do that. It's nuts. Mm-hmm. So you got to be really careful. Whereas someone who wants to build like endurance, right? well, that's not enough. You need to do more cardio. You mm-hmm. should be doing it every day. In fact, the science says 200 or 150 minutes, 150 minutes of cardio steady state a week. So that's what, two and a half hours mm-hmm. or 75 minutes of high intensity workout okay. a week, mm-hmm. which Either of those would be too much for me. Right. Well, well, that's the thing with with women too, because um, I've I've um, talked to women at work and stuff like that, and they're like, "Will you train me?" And they want to do the cardio. They want to do the cardio. And when I bring weights to them, they treat weights like it's the plague. Like, oh my god, get. I was like, yeah. weights will help you. You know, you gotta yeah. add a little bit of weight to you. I, I don't want to lift weights. I don't want. I was like, weights will help you. <laughs> Chris is so right. I mean, first of all, especially lower body lifts, we know. I mean, cardio is kind of like real time mm-hmm. calorie burn. Like if Rachel's on a treadmill and she's walking, okay, she, she's burning calories there. Mm-hmm. That's fine. But if she does squats, deadlifts, and she's doing some low body stuff, she's burning calories then and far after the fact, mm-hmm. two, right. three, four, five hours afterwards. Mm-hmm. So you're right. And especially for older women, I mean, my mom, God love her. I mean, walk seven miles a day, mm-hmm. seven miles a day. But as an older woman, Strength training, especially for osteoporosis, bone remodeling. That's exactly yeah. where I was going to yeah. go with it. Yep. It's important to tone your body just as well as use that cardio, because as you get older, your body, hmm, it, it's relying on that muscle mass. Absolutely. I mean, it, well, and bones get stronger, muscles get stronger. I mean, I talked to one gal who's going to start training and, and she's like, I just don't want to slip. I don't want to fall, mm-hmm. you know? So, okay, we have to improve core stability. We have to improve strength. Right. You know, if you're, if you're just running every day, plus your body gets used to that homeostasis. It just, it, it needs to be shocked. I told my mom, I'm like, here's the best thing you can do if you refuse to lift weights on mile three, just walk backwards. Mm-hmm. <laughs> At least your body will go, what is this? This is right. cool. I'm not yeah. used to this. Yeah. Right, because you definitely feel in their quads. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's it's something. Or mom jog for a half a mile. Just mm-hmm. stop and do ten push ups. You know, your body will be right. like, you got to shock it. Yeah. My daughter, she's like, I'm doing more work work than I used to, so my body's recognizing that. And I said, mm. but your 
body will remember these things that you're doing. And at one time, it won't. Just like, you know, I do a very intense job. I'm an NST, which is an aid on the unit. My body doesn't recognize that as exercise anymore. I've been doing it for 20 years. Good point. Good point. Yeah, that no, that's exactly it. Every single workout I do. So my chest workout this week will be totally different than my chest workout next week because I never want my body to be like, oh, yeah, it's a bench press again. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. No. Well, like one of the things, one of the things I've added to my for um for my biceps, because I was, you know, doing biceps, but I didn't get any definition. I'm like, why am I getting definition? So I lo- went and I started, I added pull-ups to my, um, to my um, routines. So now I always warm up with some pull-ups and the definition of my biceps has just like been popping because I added the pull-ups. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you have to, well, and here's the thing. If you're working the biceps brachii, are you working the brach- brachialis? Are you working the brachial radialis? I mean, so there's different parts. So someone might just do you know, straight curls and mm-hmm. then throw in a hammer curl. Ooh, that's a slightly different way to fill out the biceps. Mm-hmm. Oh, do a Zotman curl where you're coming up palms away from you. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's another different way to get them. It has to be a mix of those things. And, that, and that's an interesting thing. You said that because when you do look at a body part, you got to look at it like, okay, I got to hit, I'm, I want to hit this body part, but I got to hit it at every different angle. It's like, like with bench press one week, I'll do a wide bench press then I'll take a shorter, uh, a more narrow stance to hit it in the inner. So people are like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm hitting it at different angles. You know? Yeah. That's what you have to do. I, I did a tricep workout the other day with a guy and all his tricep activities he had been doing were long head tricep activities, no medial or lateral head. So I'm like, here's a bunch of exercises that's going to hit all three heads. So of course the next day he couldn't lift a pencil, but you know, that's what you're trying to, that's what you're trying to do. You're like, okay, we got Mm -hmm. every part of it now. So, yeah. And I'm glad you brought up that point. When you exhausted your body with new exercises, what's the best way? I mean, you're still going to work and all that. So what's the best Recovery. recovery? Yeah, absolutely. Recovering. So, I mean, good, solid protein after that, good carbs after that, especially for mass. But then just making sure that you're static stretching, that you're using a Theragun, that you're hitting the hot tub, maybe hitting the sauna, that you're foam rolling these things out, foam rolling before. I mean, absolutely. I am terrible at the advice I just gave right there. <laughs> I'm terrible. I, I, I want to... I want to put so much into the workout and then just move mm-hmm. on to the next thing that I don't do enough maintenance sure. and I really need to get better at that. Well, also, I bet you're be- good at one piece that you didn't give though, drinking water. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yep. I got my water truck right behind me. <laughs> well, also too, also too, when you said hit the hot tub, hit the steam room, but there's a lot of 24 hour gyms. Um, and a lot of them don't have the amenity because the steam room, the hot tub, um, I'm, Let's, let's keep honest. You got to pay for that. And that's mm-hmm. paid in your membership. But a lot of people go to these 24 hours where they don't have the steam, the steam room and the hot tub, you know, Chris, so, you're right. Yeah. So, so how do you, how do you, um, also too, with recovery, let's, we, we got to talk about them. One thing, uh, sleep. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. I and mean, I'm bad at that right now. <laughs> you are terrible, but you are working two jobs, doing the podcast and trying to work your own business. So <laughs> your body recovers and you are quick to, you like driving over here you were sleeping so you go to sleep very quickly so you get your cat naps in yeah (laughs) no chris brings up great points i mean if if the gym most gyms should have at least a foam roller foam roller is going to be huge i mean static stretching with a foam roller is great um if you get into active stretching where you're actually moving body parts or dynamic stretching where it's like full body movements the stuff you see like athletes do before a basketball game all important, but static stretching, especially sore spots, that's really huge. And yeah, also, too, to the listeners, as far as a foam roller, you can go to any uh, sporting goods store and get a foam roller for like 20 bucks, and you can keep it in your bedroom, keep it at home. Oh, yeah. Foam rollers, lacrosse balls, two to three pound weights, like if you're working a rotator cuff just to get some shoulder stability. Yeah, I have all that stuff just kind of in a little pile at home. Um, between that and you're right. I mean, you try... The science is seven hours for sleep. Mm-hmm. I mean, you try to get at least seven. That's really tough when you're busy. But if you can get some naps in there, a 10-minute nap is like a 100 milligram, 150 milligram energy drink. Right. So. Okay. And also, too, let's let's talk about, because we know with bodybuilding, and <clears throat> we're going to come out and say it, and with like the Mr. O and all that, all them guys are, are on steroids. And we're going to talk about the steroid thing, because I always tell people, stay away from them because 
for for one, they mess with the lower body, and <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. And the area, yeah, yeah the lower area. body area. And, <laughs> and then um, the long term effects when you get older and stuff like that, because like some bodybuilders, like Nasser Elson body, he's he's no longer with us, and. Arnold Schwarzenegger had to get open heart surgery and you look good at the time, but then long term afterwards. So what do you what do you have to say about steroids and the steroids? Because there are a lot of um, and I think what you do is uh, natural bodybuilding and what natural bodybuilding means is they're tested for steroids. But what do you, what goes on as far as as far as steroids in, in physique competitions? Yeah, buddy. I mean, if you if you so like the organization of competitive bodybuilding, the OCB, I mean, a lot of these events, you're. You are being tested, uh, especially if you go from the amateur to the pro level. And you tested lie detector, drug test, or urine test, or actually lie detectors even for the amateurs. So I'll do a lie detector on April eighth. In fact, I just have to. I just had to sign up for it. But then let's say you get your pro card at one of those events. They're going to test you um, because there are people that even even if it's testosterone injections. Mm-hmm. I mean, you it has to be within certain ranges. Sure. I mean, it's not just steroids, but. But you're right. I mean, the guys that are doing that, I mean, the liver damage, the kidney damage. Yeah. I mean, even with massive amounts of protein, you got to be careful. I, I mean, I have to drink a lot of water because I'm so thirsty. And look at, I mean, your kidneys are working hard. Mm-hmm. Your liver's working hard to, to process that protein. So, yeah, I mean, well, well you just you just mentioned it with one guy, but it, Ronnie Coleman, I mean, he can barely yeah. walk. You yeah. know, he's walking with a cane. Flex Wheeler had a leg amputated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. he's uh, Ronnie Coleman's had a bunch of back surgeries too. Oh, it's crazy. They usually say... Here's what I've heard anecdotally. I haven't seen. Mm-hmm. The, the, I don't think there's any science behind this. But basically, if you go to someone like Rachel and you say, "Okay, you want to start taking steroids? You want to live in this world? That's fine. Take 20 years off your life." But there are guys. There's girls that'll do it and say, "You know what? I'll to look this good. I will take that time off my life. I'd rather do this. Try to get on a magazine cover, even if I die early, which is nuts." But and just for our everyday listeners who are not bodybuilders, look at when you go to the doctor. Right. They say finish out the antibiotic, biotic. But when you do not need the steroid anymore, you can switch over to something more safer like ibuprofen and dianol. You know, just right there says that it's not the best thing for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I've honestly never done it, but I know guys, obviously many that have. In fact, um, I know guys that are dealing with problems after they've gotten off of it. Um, I just talked to a buddy not too long ago, you know, he's been off it for three years now and he's like, I can't lose mass. Like it's tougher for him to lose weight. It's tougher mm-hmm. for him to get rid of the, the, the mass because he was so stretched. Right. He's, he's still strong, but he just can't get defined. It's really hard. And, and it's probably because hormone levels are out of whack and mm-hmm. there's, there's just, the body is trying to recover. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, and that's really, you know, really like, like I said, it's, it's, it's not worth putting that into your body. Oh no, no, not, not, not for, I mean, the thing is uh, that th- there's not a lot of, I mean, natural bodybuilding still takes a back seat. Right, right. To, mm-hmm. to, I mean, you know, Mr. Natural mm-hmm. uh, isn't going to be as popular as Mr. Olympia yeah. and the Mr. Natural athletes obviously don't look as big. I mean, there's some that are pretty big, but right. even the ones that start to get too big, of course, what do people think? Oh, he's got to be on something. Yep. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, he's got to be on something, yeah. which frankly, there are probably ways to compete naturally and still manipulate the system. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, especially at the top end with some of those guys, I mean, look at Lance Armstrong, it's not bodybuilding, but yeah. you find ways to kind of get by the doctors yeah well with, with lance armstrong I, I was like oh he was you know shooting steroids but they're like no no he was i'm like he was what he was taking blood out of his system putting it back, back i'm like in, yeah. what the? <laughs> i mean there's some doctors out there that i'm sure are like well here's what the test would be but here's what we're going to do to get by it yeah right absolutely I'm, i don't think there's enough money and clout and status and notoriety and natural bodybuilding for someone to go to that degree but but maybe there is i, I you know now, I'm looking at movies, and um, when they were looking at football players, they were saying, you know, they came up with a movie concussion. Do they have movies like this for the average person to say, oh, my God, this is what I'm doing to my body? I mean, there are. I mean, if you look at, like, uh, Generation Irons, a lot of those are on Netflix. You can see yeah. some interesting things with Generation Iron. But, like, Ronnie Coleman's documentary, The King. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, very, very hard hitting about him. I mean, they game changers with Schwarzenegger about, you know, meat versus plant based diets. Mm. I mean, it's always kind of like skirted around. Right. It's never really said. But Generation Iron 4, which talks about natural, bo- natural bodybuilding, they talk to some bodybuilders who are pretty open about it. They're pretty frank about it. Like, yeah. listen, I take, I took, and I think this natural bodybuilder is taking, and here's why. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So there's some right. that had, yeah, it's, it's tough to find that though. Everybody kind of skirts around it until it becomes like, like the liver King. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, just eat animal organs. Oh, he's on steroids. And then it just blows up, right. you know? I mean, rock's been accused of it. Yeah. yeah. You know, is he, is he not? Ah, it, it's, yeah. It's hard to believe when you put on that much mass, you kind of right. notice it and you're like, come on, man. Mm-hmm. If you're not doing that, what are you doing? Press milk. Yeah, yeah, but what, but, but, but what is yeah. that as far as as far as with 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 sports? And I even find it in high school sports that everybody want everybody wants to win, which is a good thing. But everybody wants that. It's kind of gotten to I want to win it at any cost, you know. And if I got to take this, if I got to shoot this, and drink this, or what I'm going to do it, you know. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I I don't know. I think you know. It's it's. I can see it being a little more prevalent. Well, first of all, because you know they don't. They don't really test on the pro level, but it's the only sport, if you can call it that, I, I don't know. I guess I would, I don't know if I call it a sport, but it's the only sport where you're actually training for a visual appearance. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so you're not, mm-hmm. I always tell people on the stage, I mean, I'm malnourished. I'm annoyed. I'm angry. I have brain fog. Mm-hmm. I don't feel good. And if I took red wine or vodka the night before to dry out myself a little, mm-hmm. I mean, one Ronnie Coleman didn't win Mr. Olympia until Flex Wheeler said, here, have some shots the night before. And Ronnie Coleman, mm-hmm. for the first time, you know, took a bunch of vodka shots, took some vodka shots the morning of, dried them out, and he just popped. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're on stage and you're half buzzed, malnourished. I mean, the audience is healthier than you, but you look like that. Yeah. Right. That's goofy yeah. to me. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, Ronnie got, and I think Ronnie got seven, seven Mr. Olympias. Seven or eight, buddy. I mean, yeah. he was, yeah. Um, yeah think- and he was the one who... You know, what we talked about, he was the mm-hmm. one who kind of made, I think, the world go, oh, we're judging mass now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whereas guys like Arnold didn't like that. They're like, no, the body doesn't look as good. It should be, yeah. you know, it should be aesthetically right. pleasing. This mm-hmm. guy's just, a, you know, a semi. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, that's the th- and that's the thing with you with physique competitive is do they, do they um, look at, do they look at your um, muscles as far as your, your biceps um, coincide with your triceps and your quads or coincide with your calves and the proportionality proportion. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. yeah. It's just, um, I mean, never really know for sure, but yeah, appearance, posing, proportionality, muscle definition. I mean, all that comes into play, but the only thing I'm seeing a little, a little bit different is, is mass creeping in now, mm-hmm. you know, because there's, I, I've, I've even seen like bodybuilders who have podcasts like you guys and right. well, not as good. <laughs> but, but Thank pot- you. Appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but they'll look at themselves in the mirror and they'll go, I can't do that. I can't bodybuild. Mm-hmm. I think I have to be a physique competitor. And these guys are big. I'm yeah. like, how are you even thinking about physique? Mm-hmm. You know, and then the the bodybuilders, a lot of them just put down physique too, and they're like, No, that's nothing. That's a nothing category. Mm-hmm. You know, it's you're either a bodybuilder or you're not. And I Well that, well that's kind of with the women too, because um the women, you got, you have the fitness competitors and then you got the, the female bodybuilders. And one of the things um, with the female body, how fi- this is what I heard and correct me if I'm wrong. Female bodybuilding started because before the bodybuilding competition, they had bathing suit, co- bathing suit competitions and the women who lifted weights and worked out and that kind of morphed into uh, female bodybuilding. It did, buddy. But remember, there's still bikini too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know how people feel. I don't know how people feel about that. You know, you don't want to disparage any, I mean, but do you bring fake or plastic surgery components into that competition right. that really aren't, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know. So I don't know how female bodybuilders feel about, feel about like bikini competitions Sure, mm-hmm. that, that are still, I mean, the, the women still look good, mm-hmm. but I'm sure it's probably the same as, you know. Pro bodybuilding versus or real bodybuilding with steroid use versus natural bodybuilding. There's just yeah. kind of this mm-hmm. like we dust it under the rug. It's not as important. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, let's let's talk a little bit. Um, <laughs> we're going a little bit over time, but I got issues. Like, we're good. Okay. We got. Um, okay. We got our son. Now our son's like six. What? 
He is about 6'2", 6'3". 6'2", 6'3", about 280 pounds. He Jeez. comes to you and says, Jesse, I want to get in shape. How, how does somebody start? <laughs> so I, I simply ask him what his goals are. Uh, for a guy like that, if he's like, you know what, I'm an offensive lineman right now. I need to lift for strength and power. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so we're going we're gonna to keep your mass. And we're going to do big body lifts. I mean, I'm talking about the old linemen when I was in college. I mean, what are they doing? Clean and jerk, snatches. They're doing squats. They're doing deadlifts. They're doing big compound, mm-hmm. powerful, endure, powerful mm-hmm. and strength movements, low reps, high weight, you know, stuff like that. If he comes to me and he says, I'm 280, I want to get down to 240. Mm-hmm. Now we got something different to talk about. Right. We're like, okay, we're not lifting for strength or power anymore. Mm-hmm. We're, we're just going to chisel away at some fat. So now we got to think about our cardio. Yeah. We got to do weight training still, but we got to keep the weights low, have mm-hmm. high reps, endurance, you know, to kind of make the body burn calories. Sure. So anybody that comes to me, I just had a girl come the other day and she's like, I want to run a half marathon at the end of May. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Then what, yeah, then what you were going to do Slip is- Slip on these Nikes and <laughs> go yeah. outside. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to do a lot of treadmill work. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, we're still doing some, some weight-bearing exercises, but specific to running because right. I have to do fartlek workouts, tempo workouts, you know, mm-hmm. progressive overload workouts. I mean, it's, it's a totally different thing. So the first thing I would ask is just what, what are your goals? What do you want to achieve? And then we tailor make it for that because, sure. yeah, I'm not going to have someone lift for hypertrophy mm. if they don't want to grow muscle. Right. Yeah. You know, so my mom is not going to lift for hypertrophy. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do a lot of core stability and flexibility stuff with her. So the next time she's on the ice, she doesn't fall. Mm-hmm. You but, know, when, when she's going for her walk, she has you know, her cores engaged, her butts engaged. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that was the thing with me. Cause when I used to work with, um, I used to work at a gentleman's club and some of the girls were like, Chris, will you work out with me? I was like, sure. Well, what do you want? I just want to tone. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tone. Okay. Tone what? Tone what? Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> I mean, what do you... Yeah. And that's the thing. I, and then you got to be careful. I mean, I'm, there's, there's one woman I work with. She is really defined right now. Her body responds really well to weight training. Mm-hmm. It almost gets vascular in a short amount of time and gets really ripped, which is exactly what she doesn't want. Sure. So I'm like, okay, you, you already weigh like 110 pounds. Mm-hmm. We got to be careful because you don't want to get too ripped. Right. So okay, we're just toning more. So we, mm-hmm. you really got to be careful about how you go about these things. It's not a one size fits all approach as, as you guys know. Yeah. And I think it's important when I was talking to Chris a couple of years ago about how I wanted my body to look. He's like, well, how do you want your top to look? How do you want your body to look? Does your body really have the capability of having that image in your head? Yeah. Yeah. That's, you're right. I had someone yesterday show me photos mm-hmm. of how they wanted to look, <clears throat> and th- that's fine. We, but your body is different than that body. Yep. Yeah. What that person was doing, I could tell because this was a this was a pro woman bodybuilder. I'm like, well, we can't go to a lot of places that she went to, mm-hmm. um, but we can definitely get closer to that. Right. Yeah. But it's going to take a tremendous amount of work. You're going to have to dial in your diet. Yeah. You know, and it's just going to be a different sort of training, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, and, that's, and that's the sad thing um, you see in the, in the uh, schools is because you got these girls. And I always say this. I always say that supermodels are a really, really bad example for women because you got somebody who we got endomorph, ectomorph. And you got a girl who has that type of body where we can get you in shape. But we can't get you to a supermodel body. That's, you know, you, you just But then don't. you're also talking about airbrushing and what they're oh, doing in their yeah. diet. There's so many yeah. different things. And a lot of them are malnutrition. Yeah. Oh my gosh. They're a lot mal- Their body fat is well below 18.5. I mean, they're, they're, they're essentially underweight. And this is what they've done to their own body, which is not healthy. Yeah. No, no, not at all. You're, you're right. There's so much. And then. You know, let's be honest. If you have the kind of dough, yeah, I want my butt to look bigger. Yeah, I could do the booty builder. I could do a Bulgarian. I could do, or I could just get butt implants, mm-hmm. or I could get this, or I could get that, or I could do this. I mean, I've been to doctors before, even like me, where I, I remember going into one, and I'm like, well, I'm preparing for a show, and he's like, well, you know, instead of cutting, we could just cool sculpt you, mm-hmm. you know, and essentially do a, a essentially a, I don't want to say it's a poor man's, but it's a it, it's a type of liposuction. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well. <sighs> Yeah, I could, but I'd rather earn this and just learn right. how to keep it off as opposed yeah. to just coming in, okay, I need to do a show. Suck this, tweak this, do this, change <laughs> this. Okay, I'm ready. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> and when you're talking surgical, some of that doesn't heal right, and then you're fighting your body against that. 
Yeah. You know, the healing, the scars, that kind of thing. So yeah. how much do you really want to pay or how much do you want to work? Well, yeah, and you're right. If you don't work through it a lot, it's that cool sculpting. If I didn't learn to tweak my diet and, and work my abs the right way, it just would have came back. So, yeah, but it's a short, it's a Band-Aid. And, and that's the thing, too, because when I when I drive to work in the morning, I hear the radio. Oh, I was able to, and I hear these ads all the, oh, I was able to lose weight without, without a lot of exercise. Yeah. So you have to exit. You got to, you, I'm going to say it right here. People, you got to put in the work. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely right, Chris. Yeah. I, I just don't, I just don't see it any other way. I yeah. mean, diet and exercise. I mean, the yeah. pills, the powders, the creams, the, I mean, I, I talked to a guy the other day about how to lift to boost testosterone. In that same day, I had someone come up to me and say, that he's going to buy a testosterone throat spray mm. that he saw online. First of all, <laughs> it's not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> testosterone pills, none yeah. of them, it, it, it doesn't work. Either you're getting testosterone injections or mm-hmm. you're cleaning up your diet and you're lifting in a way to boost testosterone. So we know like five sets of 10 squats, mm-hmm. even lighter weight before a workout is going to boost testosterone for the next 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's do that. Instead of using some throat spray mm-hmm. that you paid forty dollars for that isn't going to work. <laughs> if anything, it might have a placebo effect, but even that doesn't work. And what's funny is I said to the guy, "What's your testosterone now?" I don't know. Well, then how do you know if it's going to work? Right. At least get a baseline. But mm-hmm. I'll tell you right now, it's not going to work. Save your forty bucks. Right. You know. And I think it's important to you know say this. But I've always said this. It's a life change, not a diet. It's not a yo-yo. Good for you. Yeah. No, that's it. It's a lifestyle change. I mean. It takes six months minimum to build a new habit. This is why people will come into the gym in January and oh, I'm not seeing results. It's February. Right. Well, okay. <laughs> give it more time. Or, mm-hmm. well, I tweaked my diet a little, but I just couldn't stay with it. Well, then here comes the peaks yeah. and valleys and yeah. the ups and downs. <laughs> I mean, you got to stick with it. You know, yeah. and even if it's, you know, if you read a book like Atomic Habits where it's just 1% better each day, I mean, if you're going to go run, just put your shoes by your bed, wake up, put on your shoes, take them off, go back to bed. Okay, step one. Next, put on your shoes. You know, next week, walk downstairs, take them off, go back to bed. Next day, go outside, walk around the block, go back to bed. You know, mm-hmm. that's how it's going to happen. It, right. It's not going to happen by, oh, I'm going to watch a bunch of running videos <laughs> and, and and I'm going to take this pill and I'll be fine. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Totally true. Totally yeah. true. Yeah, because I because with me working out and I look in the mirror and Rachel's <laughs> Rachel, I'm always talking. Oh, look at this! Look at how good I look! And she's like, "Shut up!" But I always say it's it's the never ending sculptor because it's like, okay, my my chest looks good, my my biceps look good. Okay, but I got to work on my triceps. Okay, my chest look good, my biceps look good, my triceps look good. Now I got to work on my quads. Okay, yeah. my legs look good. Now I got to work on my chest. And I always it's the never ending sculptor that's never going to get done. You know? You're right. You're right. Yeah. Well, I that, know yeah. we're well over time, but I have yeah. to ask this question. How do you get rid of that body image when somebody has worked so hard on their body and they still see themselves as fat? And I know you know what I'm talking about because uh, everybody sees it. Yeah. Body dysmorphia. I mean, you, you, you're, you're, you're right. I, I wish I knew Rachel because that has happened to me mm-hmm. where I'm looking and I'm like, man, why, why aren't my abs you know, but if I was to ask someone else, like, what are you talking about? Right. But I'm like, no, they're a little, I said that to a guy in the locker room the other day, Chris. I'm like, we were comparing abs. Of course, who does that? We're comparing abs. And I'm like, no, mine are just kind of, a, they're not quite as defined. You know, I think I need to get down and wait. He's like, are you nuts? You're more than fine. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, you're probably right. So no, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. That one, that one is beyond me. You know, you don't want to go far as to say it's a mental illness, but I suppose it, be, it, it mm-hmm. can become a mental illness, right? right. You know that right. stuff more than me. I mean, I, I don't want to get to that point, but yeah. How, when is it good enough? Right. Yeah. When do you see your new body? I mean, you know, that, and that's where I was um, before I met Chris. I was at a great great body weight and i definitely went up because of all my health challenges but in that moment i was seeing my old self not my new self i know i know i mean i'm sure there's i gotta believe someone like you and i mean there's got to be counseling or therapy for something like that because right. taken to the extreme isn't that where like an anor- right an- anorexia, anorexia bulimic, bulimic, that, all that okay. other stuff I'm, yeah. I'm not where i need to be i'm going to start purging yeah absolutely <laughs> right i mean 
I was just saying that to myself. I'm like, okay, so to cut, I'm going to need 1800 calories Mm -hmm. max for the next four weeks. I could probably do 22 to 2300. Am I just doing 18 to really, really get there, get there? Is it necessary? And then at 18, am I going to be like, should have done 16? That Mm -hmm. was stupid. I like, come on. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, Jesse, this has been a great conversation. I love talking about working out. I know you did. But yeah. um, your your contest is coming up soon. When Your contest is in April, you said? April 8th, Los Campiones Cup in Bloomington, yeah. Los Campiones Cup in Bloomington. And if anybody has any questions and want to get started, want to um, get started on your body, because it's now February here in Minnesota, and uh, spring is around the corner if you want to start getting into shape and getting ready for spring, um, what's the one way they can, and you want to talk to Jesse, are you like, how do I get started? And you want to talk to Jesse? Jesse, is there a way they can get hold of you? Uh, email you or yeah, for sure, buddy. So I can give them my email. Um, you could just text me too. My email is J and then my last name Godzala G O D Z A L A at lt dot life. You know, lifetime is where mm-hmm. I train. Um, or is it cool to give all my phone number? People? I'm going to actually put that on the show. Oh, you are, but, just okay. Yeah. yeah, Rachel's got it. Then. So if you got yeah. any questions and especially if you got any questions on uh, supplementation and you want to get started on supplementation, definitely give him a call. He knows what he's talking about. And, um, don't just go in there and just start buying the stuff because the people at, uh, at the, at these stores are going to say, Oh, you need this. You need this. You need this. Yeah. talk to somebody who knows what they're doing and, yeah. see, and start out slowly. Okay. And don't play around with that stuff. And um, I'm going to let Rach close us out. All right. We've come to an end again, you guys. I am so happy we are going. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So I want you guys to do one thing. Give yourself grace and do it the right way. Until next time. Take it easy. 